A second batch of 183 evacuees from Poland arrive at the Inambi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, at about 6.30 p.m. At hand to receive them is a joint government team led by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Mrs. Sadia Farouk. The evacuees are mostly students. Behind me are the second set of Nigerians that have been evacuated from Ukraine. Many of them have longed to return to their fatherland after Russia attacked Ukraine, devastating the economy of the country and setting many people on the edge. They are taken through some COVID-19 protocols, including testing for the virus while also undergoing documentation procedures. Our government has been very, very proactive. Uh, Mr. President has done all the needful, and he directed that all Nigerians living in these countries should be brought back home in safety and in dignity, and that is what we have done. The war in Ukraine has claimed hundreds of lives, with about one million people reportedly displaced amidst rising humanitarian crises. These young Nigerian evacuees narrate their experiences of the conflict. There was panic up and down. The stores were all cleared out. Uh, yeah, we're just all worried and hearing the sirens and everything. It was so devastating because in my life I've never seen people dying. We were traumatized because we are not ready. We are not mentally ready for this. But they are glad the Nigerian government came through for them. People came through for us. Nigeria government came through for us. They kept checking on us. So it gave us hope that we could still survive it, and we did. Out of the 183 evacuees from Poland, 180 are adults and three infants. The government says at least 60 more Nigerians may have been left behind in Poland, as it expresses worries over more than 300 Nigerians still trapped in a part of Ukraine considered unsafe. There are still a lot of Nigerians that have not even decided to leave Ukraine, you know. That's one. Two, we still have uh, over 350 students in SUNY College, which has been cut off. You know, they can't go to Russia. They can't come in. You know, their light was being restored now. At the time, it was cut off. Water was cut off. So as soon as we, were, we are through with the safe corridor, we will be able to go for those ones too. And as the evacuees from Poland are cleared, Another batch of 174 evacuees, including children, arrives at about 11.25 p.m., this time from Hungary. Physically exhausted, mentally distressed, some try to avoid the camera. They are also taken through the protocols in place and are documented. They too have a story to tell. I got injured. I sustained a lot of injuries. My leg, I had to, I was limping for like three, four days. And like, we, we, didn't, we didn't get a shower for like about four, five days. Sometimes we don't even remember if we've eaten that day, if we've drank water or anything. Outside the hall, their families wait desperately to receive them. And the joy of those whose words have arrived knows no bound. Oh, I don't know what I will say. I thank God. I just thank God. Yeah. How do you feel meeting mommy? I feel good, great, happy, thankful that I am safe to meet her. Foremost, I felt happy because I now know, yes, the, the, the situation is not as I expected it to be in the first place because my government, which is Nigerian government, has done all the needful that is required of any government. More than 5,000 Nigerians, mostly students, were caught up in the Ukrainian crisis, many of whom have fled to neighboring countries. The Nigerian government plans to evacuate those willing to return in a matter of days, a commitment projected to grab the sum of $8.5 million. It's a feeling of joy on one side that they are back home away from the devastating effect of the war in Ukraine. But on the other hand, they're not happy because their studies somehow has been interrupted. They are hoping that the war in Ukraine will end very soon and they will go back to their school.
and fulfill their dreams. Emperor Simon, Channels Television News.